Well, in today's video, March 1st, we are turning a wig stand. And I'm going to do something a little bit different, something I've never done before, and that is I'm going to make a barley twist for the center spindle on this. So I hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned, and uh, thank you very much. Okay, now, welcome to another Four Ways to Turn Something video. March 1st, 2024, and the topic and the challenge is going to be to turn a wig stand. Now, this is a really important issue because there are people who have some medical issue where they have a, a challenge with their hair and they have to wear a wig. Or maybe you just like to wear wigs, but I'm going to make a wig stand out of this pile of, of wood. I'm going to make a base. I'm going to make a spindle that connects the base and the top of my wig stand and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little twist on this part of the of the uh, wig stand so stay tuned and also watch Mike Peace, Richard Raffin and Tomislav Tomesic from Croatia watch us all and see what we do with our wig stand so First thing I gotta do is glue up the top of my wig stand. Alright, I'm all ready to start my project. Four ways to turn a wig stand. And that must be March 1st, 2024. So here is the very top of my wig stand. That's where the wig is gonna sit. And it'll be prettier than that. Uh, this is gonna be the base. And I'm not sure if I'll keep this shape. I kind of like it actually. So um, in between the base and this will sit this particular spindle. And it's got some really, really nice grain in there. It must have been from a crotch. So I've got something special planned for this. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to start working on this and I probably won't show you very much of it because it's like uh, it's kind of I don't know ugly I'll show it to you when it starts looking a little prettier so I'm working my way down the, uh, the very top of my wig stand and I got it rounded, rounded over pretty well, so it's uh, it's more balanced. I'm going to just keep working my way down here. Then I'm going to work on the final shape, which I really don't have much idea what that should be. I am turning right at 1,000 RPM. Alright, now one of the measurements that I think is important is the circumference around the biggest part of my wig stand. And I measured my wife's head. Okay, I actually put this <laughs> bit of rope around her head. Ah. Anyway, I'm going to just see where I'm at here. And, and actually, it's a little smaller than this rope, which I think is better. I don't think I need an enormous wig stand, especially if it ends up being for a child. Some of this is going to depend on the shape. I want it to look nice. Okay, let's get this locked down. And I'm probably going to reduce the height of this quite a bit. Now I've got my chuck here. This is a, a set of pin jaws going into a, a drilled recess. And then I'm going to come back up here to the top and do a little bit more work on that.
Okay, you might hear my grinder slowing down over there. I put a new sharpen on this tool, so I'm going to work my way down here. And I'm going to undercut this just a little bit so it looks, uh, looks a little nicer. Take a look at my surface. Not too bad. This is a piece of maple. This is a piece of mahogany. And it's got some badly torn grain. So I'm going to work my way back up here a little bit. Try to improve the surface. a little better. I like that shape. And I'm probably going to cut this off right in here. So I need a little bit more, more work on this piece of mahogany in the middle. It's really nasty. Do a little shear scraping on that. Turn my speed up. We're going 1100 Getting some nice shavings at least off that. I think maybe I need to go in the other direction. I'm not sure that's not improving that much. I'm going to do a little push cut from here in that direction. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so here's my badly torn grain and there's my push cut. So I think I'm on the right track doing a push cut the rest of the way. I'm getting closer. That surface is uh, greatly improved on that. So I'm going to work my way around, uh, complete the very top of this. I think it's a it's a pretty good size, at least for an adult. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the shape so far. I'm going to work a little bit more on the very top here. Alright, now I've got another parting tool. I'm going to go down a little bit farther.
Okay, now if you want a, a really nice clean cut with a gouge, this a half inch bowl gouge. I have the flute almost completely pointed straight up. And I'm turning with this left wing right here. And you got to have a nice firm grip on this, on the handle, or else it'll twist on you. Let's do one more cut. So I'm going to do a little bit of sanding on this and we'll take this nub off and we'll be, we'll be in good shape with the very top of our wig stand. Okay, from here. Alright, now I have my spindle between centers. This is the uh, connection between the base and the very top of my wig stand. I'm going to just round this over to begin with. Got a couple little flat spots. This piece of walnut has some really, really pretty grain in this. So I'm going to find a skew chisel. Oh, this is probably a one inch skew. It's a uh, robust tool. They make some nice tools. If you're interested in a lathe or even uh, turning tools, let me know. I can hook you up. I'm turning about 1200 RPM by the way. Okay, let me show you just a little bit what I'm going to do here. I didn't want to make a tenon on the ends of these. I want to use this entire length for my spindle. So I'm going to drill a hole and I'm going to put um, a couple inches of this one inch dowel in the end of the spindle. So here we go. And that should do it. Let's make sure my spindle, make sure my dowel is going to fit in there. So I'm going to reverse this, do the same thing at the other end. Then I'll go back to turning my design on this, which is, I think it's going to be pretty cool. All right, so we'll lock that in. All right, now. What I am going to do, I've never done before, I'm going to do a barley twist on this. So I'm going to mark these. I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six segments on my spindle. And I'll just uh, forge ahead. I think this will work. I'm going to Take my pencil and darken those. Okay, now my my robust lathe has a really excellent indexing system on it. So what I did, I wanted to first of all, I wanted to divide these up into four sections. Okay, so I go to number one, 
and along my tool rest I make a mark. Okay. Now there are 48 markings on my indexing wheel so I'll go to 24 right here and I'll do the same thing, make a mark and then in between 48 and 24 is 12 and 36. So I've got my my sections marked out evenly on that. Now here's another way you can do it which might be a little bit uh, funky. They would take an elastic band or a, a string or something, wrap it around the spindle and they make they do these evenly and they mark them and then they would cut those out. Um, that was the way a long time ago that they used to do threads. So the next thing I need to do is connect these points all the way through there and I'll get my spiral for my twist. Now I'm right handed so I'm going to do a barley twist going from this direction I can really use my right hand. I'm going to start here. Okay now this is really very time consuming. Marking this out took about three and a half or four minutes so I want to just kind of speed things up and do a voiceover. I'm connecting the uh, corners on those rectangular sections and if you want to watch somebody who's really marvelous Stuart Mortimer find him on uh, YouTube and he's he's the king of the barley twist. Now I'm going to end up doing a lot of carving on this. Oh by the way I've marked a little section on each end right here and right here and I may do a bead or some detail just to kind of put a border around my my barley twist. Now I've got a a little hand saw here. I've got a piece of tape on there with about a 3 8 inch reveal on that and I'm going to saw down to that tape. I'm going to just go around very, very lightly. Now I'm going to show you very little of this entire process. I've got my headstock locked and I'm using my, my little Proxon carver. I'm going to go through a lot of different tools, hand tools and a couple carving tools. I'm standing on the back side of the lathe because I've got to be here to go in the right direction for this uh, particular carving procedure. I'm going to do just a little bit here. This is a great little little tool, but it's really for more precise, detailed carving. I've got some different tips. I might try one more tip on this just to see if that works a little better. But this, this would take a long time, and I'm not going to do that. So what I did first was I took a, a saw and went down maybe a, a quarter of an inch or so, three-eighths. And then the next process is go a little deeper. Okay, and a little deeper and a little deeper. I've got different uh, rasps, for example, that, uh, you know, I can get down in there eventually, but I've got to take off a lot of wood to begin with. Now, the next tool I'm going to use is 
my Merlin 2. Let me show the let me show that to you. All right, now let me show you my next tool. This is a Merlin 2 uh, carver. It's got a number of different attachments. What I've got in here right now is a is a very aggressive carbide uh, carving tool. I'm going to call it a carver. I've got a lot of different sanding attachments that I can use on this. So I got my headstock locked. Let's turn this on. And this is a variable speed. That's the ticket. Now you can see as I, I carve down here a little deeper, here's the, the saw kerf right in the valley of that. And as I get down a little deeper, I eliminate that. Okay, I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to try to unlock my, my headstock. And if I can hold this tool with one hand, I can, I can make a little bit faster progress. That is really, really excellent. I'm taking out a lot of wood. So what I'm going to have here eventually, I'm going to have a valley, and then this will be the peak. These areas right in here, that'll be the high point. What I want to do is just have kind of an undulating surface on that. And as I go along here, I can see that I may need to go in the other direction with this carving tool because I'm taking out a lot of wood on the left side of that uh, area. Anyway, let me readjust my camera. Now that uh, made pretty quick work of that. This is my Merlin, Merlin 2. So I've gone around and I've tried to eliminate that saw kerf. Pretty ugly at this point, but it really gives me some, some ideas on where to go from here. I've got a lot of different rasps and files and uh, sandpaper. I'm not sure if this is maybe maybe a good one to go to next i, I need to kind of um, even out this valley here now i'm going to lock my indexing wheel i have the the headstock locked and that's you know a lot of a lot of play in there so i want to stop this i'm doing that and uh yeah, and I think I'm, I'm going to start taking off these edges here, what I want to do. All right, now I've got um, a little bit more of my, uh, of my barley twist completed. Let me show you what I'm doing right now. And I am going to turn my, my dust collector on. So it's going to be noisy. I'll probably do a... Uh, a voiceover on this, but what I'm 
uh, doing it. What I found to be successful, and that's what it's all about. I've uh, I've tried several different um, files and rasps and different things. They work okay, but I need to take off quite a bit of, of wood right now. So I'm using my my Merlin 2, which is just a dandy tool, and I can go anywhere from this carbide cutting device uh, to sanding disc, which I'll put on there. And uh, anyway, let me show you what I'm doing here. And I'm going to probably go to the other side of the lathe to do this other ridge right here. What I'm doing is I'm working on, let's call it the left side of these valleys. And I need to, need to mark. I need to mark where I'm starting from, so I'm going to I'm going to just put a mark out here. And again, this area and this area are going to be turned down to something decorative. So let me just show you very quickly what I'm what I'm doing here. I won't uh, bore you too much, but uh, dust collector. Um, I've got that about where I want it. I'm trying to take off this this ridge right here. I'm going to go to the other side of the lathe. I'm not sure if I'm going to show it to you, but I'll uh, show you the different progressive steps as I get more of a nice undulating shape on this. Okay, so I'm on the other side of the lathe, and I think this is going to work good. Uh, I'm just making my, my way down the first uh, twist here. Okay, now I am uh, reaching the end of making the barley twist. I've spent a lot of time off camera working on this, sanding and doing some different things. I'm going to show you some of the devices I used. Here's a sanding stick that uh, came in pretty handy. and It was a lot of trial and error and some of the things I just gave up on because it was too tedious. Anyway, let me show you a little bit uh, more of what I did to reach this point. I still have a little sanding to do on this. <clears throat> okay, now at my American Beauty I have uh, an old DeWalt drill. It's a corded drill which I think is a good idea to have in your shop. And I've got some uh, little sanding drums Okay, this one's probably half an inch, and this one here is probably three-fourths of an inch in diameter. And I just went from one to another. Uh, I don't want to do a lot on this right now because I've, I've got this sanded smoother than, than these. These are probably 80 grit uh, sanding drums, and I've got a whole box full of them. Let me show you. And these probably came more from my woodworking days. But uh, here's a big one, and I put some of these up in my drill press if I'm working on a project. Here's a, what that sleeve looks like that you put on there. This one's a little, little smaller, but still it's a couple inches in diameter. All right. Now one of the first uh, sanding sticks I came up with was this. Well, I discovered it was way, way too big in diameter. So what I did was I went to uh, this one, and these came off an old uh, piece of furniture, just some 
very basic little spindle legs. So I've got this bit from here down to the to the end tapered. This is probably half an inch down here up to maybe three-fourths of an inch. And that worked really well. Uh, I could uh, find a radius that fit my barley twist. <clears throat> now I was looking for a, a dowel and I, I ran across this uh, PVC pipe. For, but I wrapped some uh, this is probably 60 grit. I wrapped it around there, glued it on with CA glue. And then I got to the point where I simply wrapped whatever grit of sandpaper I wanted around this, like that, and uh, worked on my, my barley twist. Um, anyway, I'm going to do a little bit more work, and I'm about ready to, to call this uh, finished. All right, now I put a little detail on this end of my, my spindle. There's a bead and a cove, it's pretty simple. And I'm, I'm turning this around. I'm going to put this into my dowel right there. Bring up my tail center. Right there. And I think what I'm going to do is just make the same detail on the other end. And I'm going to start with the point tool right there. And over here, make another groove and on the middle of that will be my bead. So I'm just using some type of bedan, I guess, glorified parting tool to make that flat. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna form my bead with my my point tool. That does a really nice job, so I'm going to go to uh, a small spindle gouge for my, my cove. Okay, so we are finally back to some turning, which is a welcome relief from all that sanding. Now when I do this cove, I'm going down to the very bottom from each direction and stopping right in the, the valley of that cove. There we go. Let me show you my point tool once again. I'm going to redefine this area there. And all I do Kind of rotate that tool around. All right. I think I'm getting a lot of vibration from the other end, but but that's okay. Uh, let me do one more thing. I'm going to redefine these these flat areas right here.
Alright. Little sanding and we'll be we'll be good with those ends of my spindle. Then I can go to some finishing. Okay now, sometime when I'm in a hurry, I like to spray lacquer. I got one coat of shellac and I've sprayed one coat of lacquer on this. And you know, I'm very happy with this right now. I thought I had a lot of scratches, but it looks really nice. And I'm gonna take some steel wool um, and just kind of go over this and then maybe spray a couple more coats of lacquer on that. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put this thing together. It will be done. And I'll show you what I have. Well, my barley twist now has three or four coats of lacquer. Alright, now it's time to start working on my uh, base for my wig stand. Let me show you what I got. Uh, this is something I I found and it's actually uh, the beginning of a square plate alright and this is the top side of it and what I'm going to do um, is I'm, I've got a expansion recess right here that I'm going to put that in this orientation work on the top of this I don't believe this is thick enough, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add probably a one inch piece of uh, maple. This is some, some nice maple, and I'm, I'm going to add that to the top to make that a little thicker. This expansion recess was already on there, so I just need to do a little bit of sanding. This is the bottom, so let me put this in the correct orientation, and I probably won't show you every second of this. Um, everything else is ready. The, the very top of the wig stand, the head of it, uh, and the spindle is all finished. So let me work a little bit on this and we will continue. Alright, now I have a little block of wood right here. This is actually some box elder, but it'll It'll be okay for what I'm doing here. It's going to add a little bit of thickness. And again, I just got that jammed against this part of my project. And I'm going to take this down a little bit and form a tenon and reverse it and glue it into the top of my base. Let's take a take a measurement on this. All right, in the ballpark. Let me take my tail center away, and we'll just see how this see how this uh, fits in there. All right, that's going to be okay. Right, right about there. Okay, let me work a little bit more on this and then we'll turn this around and glue it in. All right, now I have my block of wood just about ready to uh, glue in there. Okay, the diameter right here is a little big and sometimes it's just as easy to uh, kind of take a little bit of wood off right here on the... Uh, the mortise part of this, mortise and tenon, and I've got a, a very little, um, oh it's kind of a parting tool, it's a Robert Sorby, and I'm going to just take off a little bit of wood here, all right, there we go, and all I got to do is glue that in, and I'm going to bring my tail center up for a clamp, all right, I'm ready to go here. I got uh, 
I got some tight bond glue and whenever I glue wood to wood it's always it's always tight bond sorry I don't use CA glue I do use CA glue in a lot of different uh, applications but not when I'm gluing wood to wood just don't do it so I'm going to make sure that's uh, yeah <laughs> make sure that's all spread out on my on my block get a little bit in this tenon and this is never coming apart all right bring up the tail center and that's running nicely true nicely true okay anyway it's in there so let that dry and I'm gonna do a little bit of turning and drill a hole down the center of it for the dowel connecting my my spindle all right now I got my block glued in here I got a hole drilled down the center of that for my one inch dowel now this is a cross grain block of wood just as this is right here it's not end grain so I've got to go across this way when I cut this okay I can't go in from this direction in fact you can see the end grain right there that I would bump into so I'm going to make some kind of profile on this clean up the surface and I'm going to take a point tool and come out about right here make a bead now the point tool is a tool that you can uh, very easily make this is one I bought um, and I like the 5 16 inch steel uh, if you have a an old screwdriver uh, a Phillips works really well you can just make one very easily and I'll show you when I glue my my spindle in there that this should be visible I, I'm trying not to block that so I'm going to continue around here not trying to do anything too fancy well thank you very much for watching my video it's been really fun making this barley twist and this wig stand and I hope it benefits somebody please subscribe and share and like my videos and leave a comment so I'll talk to you next time thank you very much all right I'm gonna I'm gonna take a scraper clean this up and right here I've got uh, a little bit of a cove right there and the rest of this I just need to clean that up just a little bit and do some sanding on it and we'll be done with uh, with the base and the whole project yeah I like it and then I'll put a little bit of finish on here and it should blend this box elder into this maple so it should work out okay Okay, now I want to show you how my my wig stand all goes together here. There it is, completed. And I'm toying with the idea of, of not gluing this together. Okay. 
take the top off here. Ugh. Here's the top of my wig stand, okay? And on the bottom of that, I've got a one inch hole drilled for this dowel. Here's my barley twist that goes into the base. Okay, there's another one inch dowel. And I didn't want to take um, walnut out of this area right here to make the tenon, so I just added the dowels. That goes in the, the base. The top goes on the other end of the barley twist right there. And there it is. Let me show you some other pictures um, at the very end of the video.